Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. Um, so we have a special guest on our show today. Yeah, we made him cry. <laughs> yeah, we made him cry. True, already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did it. My favorite was she came in and she... The first time she was on our podcast, she was like, I listened to my hype song on the way over here. <laughs> it's true. I was like rapping coming yes. in. <laughs> you were listening to Macklemore. Yes. And then today uh, you came in and decided to cry instead. <laughs> it's so true. It was like total different mood. I, I think I probably need to cash up you somebody for that counseling session. I just that hour long heart surgery I just experienced. Thank you. Oh, it was yeah. so fun. It was so you nice. guys, they live what they preach. <laughs> well, that's true. We Aww. are super messy and we work through a lot of mess with ourselves and others. <laughs> so if, gracious. If you guys haven't listened to it, um, we've we previously did it, uh, had a had a time with Jenna yeah. here. You want to tell them about that? Yeah, where she's a boss. She's really good at communicating emotional truths and she lives a really well balanced life between having a lot of fun in life and having a lot of deep, meaningful connection and bonding. And so she's a mom of three. She's a business owner and she's been married for how many years? 11. 11. Boop, boop. My marriage is a middle schooler. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> the awkward years. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The awkward It's beautiful. <laughs> that's the truth. 11 year olds are awkward. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. are. Um, okay. So we're, we have her on the podcast today, and we're going to talk about how to create special moments in life. Because I think we can all get really just in the mundane, we can get focused on what is like just getting through life yeah. and we can forget to celebrate or have like rites of passage or have mm. specific moments that mark occasions for the sake of engaging people. And, and even like, I know that we have a culture here where I've seen a lot of people come in from the outside and be like shocked by how we can have meaningful connection in the mundane. Like we could have a birthday, something as small as, at a birthday party, maybe we'll take some time and just tell the person whose birthday it is the things that we love about them. I like how you said maybe because that 100% happens every party. <laughs> it's hours long. There's <laughs> tissues involved. It's true. You're trying to make us think like, no, like it happens. No, no, to no. The no. Point, to the point where people start avoiding birthday yeah. parties. They're like, oh my God, I'm not going to be at my own birthday party where I have to hear for an hour how everyone loves <laughs> <Yeah>. me. <laughs> No, but I said maybe because like legitimately Justin, I change the questions every year for Justin because mm. he doesn't actually like that. Now totally. we have Rose. Oh, and then everyone's yes. allowed to say one thing, not 10 things, one thing if they want. Like, oh, yeah. I like this about you. Okay, thanks. I had, Actually, my last birthday party I did a rose too. I was like, okay, I want to hear the most absurd story that you have with me instead of. <laughs> 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 and I made them dress like me one year, actually, because I like roasting because I'm just eccentric and bizarre. And I always feel like when people have to, when there's like a dress code, it's like a higher buy in before you get there. Right. So there was like a pregnant me that showed up. <laughs> there was like a burning man me. There was like, <laughs> oh, it was so funny. But then, like, we were all just laughing at it, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's just different ways, but I agree. Yeah. it's So we have, I think what we've done is found ways to make birthdays feel special without it being like we have to spend $500 and think about it for three weeks. You know, like, there's, there's a lot of ways to create just special moments. And Jenna is so good at this. That that's one of the reasons I wanted to have her on because the way she thinks about things are so practical and, and she's great at having both fun and having um, the deep heart connection. So the, welcome to the show. I think what you guys can't see because you're listening is every time she's like saying really nice things about me, I like move away from my mic because I'm like, <laughs> want to make eye contact and smile. I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, oh yeah, podcast mode. It's okay. <laughs> so if you hear me awkwardly breathing, it's because I'm so happy. Oh, <laughs> so nice things. Yeah. And allergic to our down pillows. Yeah, that's true. Heavy breathing's <laughs> happening from allergic reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that Benadryl when it kicks in. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to talk about really quick a story that I just recently had that was very meaningful to me. And then we're just going to kind of talk through different moments that we've been in, 
ways that you can engage people and um, kind of then how you think about things to break it down. I want to add this. Nope. The, <laughs> <laughs> what we're talking about here today is bringing something to the table uh, in a way where we're actually engaging life and being yes. present with life and present with one another because far too often people are so disconnected from life and they don't know how to connect in. And these are practical ways of getting present with yourself, present with people and creating experiences so that you're actually feeling alive to life and not just surviving it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's what what's your what's your story? What's my story? Okay. So we recently went to Colorado and um I went out with Justin and both Pizzi and Justin were being so freaking weird that day. <laughs> Pizzi was like, I got a babysitter. I feel really disconnected from you. I need you to come <sighs> hang out with me at four thirty. And I was like, you're being so needy. We saw each other yesterday. I stay at your house. Like, what do you mean we're not connected? I was like, this is so weird. And, and then Justin was like, we were at a place at, and at 4.30, he's like, I have a headache. We got to go. We got to go now. We got to go. And I was you like, were so stubborn. Let me just add this real quick. <laughs> I was like, hey, we need to go at this time. You're like, no, I'm having a good time. We need to. No. We were just visiting stay my dad. I was like, where do we got to go? I'm <laughs> visiting my dad. We had a time that, that I said to leave by. And then I just like kept letting it go. And I know what's about to happen. Yeah. So anyway, they were both being weird. I didn't know. So I was just moseying through oh. my day. And then um, so we got back back to Pizzi's house and when I walked in there was like I don't know 20 to 30 people there yeah that all yelled surprise at me which was very surprising because there's <laughs> nothing in my life right happening. you're like it's not my birthday <laughs> yeah, what totally. is happening and then there was this sign that said hope on it and I was like I don't know what's happening and they were like <laughs> They were like, this is your hope for healing party. Oh. And so they all, what they'd done is they had felt like um, after me being sick for so long, they just wanted to have an event where I felt not alone and like they were carrying mm. the weight of this journey with me. And so they had all these foods that I could eat, which is impressive because oh. there's not that many foods I can eat, but they had a lot of ones that tasted really good. And then um, they ended up like praying over me. I mean, probably like, I don't know, six different people just cried over me for like an hour. Oh my gosh. And um, they sang over me. I had Pizzi's dad, who I grew up with, who's like a dad to me, like held me and prayed over me and Justin in this season. And people prayed over Justin for like the process that he's been in walking mm -hmm. with me through sickness. And then um, like the brothers held me and like the, it, it was just like, we're fighting with you. You're not alone. You don't have to carry the pain of this alone. We love you. It was very, very sentiment. I mean, like there's a lot of fun too. I, I talked about the emotional part, but first we were just all having fun and eating and hanging out. Um, but it was really significant and beautiful. And I thought it wasn't actually that hard to organize in the sense that like, I'm not trying to demean what they did. <laughs> what they did was so powerful. I was trying to think about it for other people though. Like it was just the intention of we want, we see that you're going through something and like we're holding space that we don't believe this is the end of your story and that this is what your life will always be like. Right. And it was very, very impactful for me. And it wasn't thousands of dollars and it wasn't like, like even the sign was just hand drawn and it was cute. And there was, there was, no, it wasn't like, oh, we put oh, all yeah, this. It was hand drawn by a mom whose kids colored it in. Right. Which was so cute. And so it wasn't like this big extravagant thing. It was, but it was extravagant yes. in the heart process of it. Of, Each person brought food. So it wasn't like one person had to feed everyone. No. And everyone shows up and it was like, no, we're here to be present inside of your story. We're just considering you and your experience. And what that built was a camaraderie and a connection between everyone who's inside of yeah. that experience fighting for someone, yeah. fighting for hope for someone or, or expressing love and care. Yeah, they all bonded. They all had great experiences. Multiple people told um, Pizzi afterwards like that that like re-reminded their heart about things they love about God or things they love about loving people. And, but it was just the intentionality of we're going to create something special f in an intentional way. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I feel like a little high whenever I hear like really thoughtful friend gestures like that, like I feel high off of them. You I'm do. Like, oh my gosh. Like I love hearing people love 
others well when there's mm-hmm. nothing to get out of it for them and yes. it's not a birthday it's really just like a heart connect of wanting to be with you on your journey and it's interesting though because like that's one reaction but then i feel like the other reaction that people have hearing that is like i don't have that right so mm-hmm. for instance on um on my instagram i will post some of my life snapshots here yeah. and there and i get i would say the most often when we do things like that for other people or friends or i have something and do little windows of it the most common thing is I wish I had friends like that or right. I wish I had that kind of community. And it's interesting because I mean, we start thinking about it more and I realize that like what happened isn't that a bunch of people random like there's not a lack of awesome people no. in Kansas City or somewhere totally. in Texas or where you're at. There's not a lack of people, but usually it takes someone yes. investing and it's like someone has to like. There is anything that's worth a lot of money. There's a cost associated with it. And with friendship, there is this history of showing up and doing for other people and initiating. Mm -hmm. And then when you like show up and like serve your friends and do that, you can then like it's like a bank account withdrawal when it's your turn or like when it's something like so the idea that like I just want people to be there for me all the time is not the concept. There's this very mutual flow of life and you have to invest and create the history and cultivate that in your world. So the idea that like. I want to just fall into someone else's like you like if you don't have it like go cultivate it because you can yep. and it's super simple and a lot of people are probably waiting for someone to t- that's, that's what it feels like there's a bunch of people waiting so it's not like anyone doesn't want to be your friend but like be the instigator because probably a lot of people want it and will go after it and just don't know how to start it and there's a bit of vulnerability in yes. starting it but it's totally worth it and like create what you want to have come you know oh have, yeah well, designing and- that culture the deliberateness to design that culture mm-hmm. people have asked me even in my own life like how do you have such good friends and yes. you, you where you guys can have such good deep heart talk and i'm like i cultivate it for years people like were dumb as doorknobs <laughs> <laughs> not justin everybody else was right. dumb as doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> not adjusted at all but no people like didn't didn't have emotional intelligence and i'm not even saying that i did but what little i did have i'm like i'm going to bring this to the table and i'm going to begin to initiate this with people around me right. until it becomes part of our normal where i'm like oh that's what i wanted and now my friends are naturally exchanging that culture back towards me without me initiating yeah i would say in my friend group I'm always the culture initiator. That's a good way to like, put it. I'm always the one that is like, like pulling people into a moment of love or vulnerability. And th- so like when they had that party for me, I'm never like, oh, I hope somebody will throw me a party where I feel really loved. That is never my mindset. Yeah. I never think, oh, I'm missing out because I'm always thinking like, how can I create a love moment for people? Because I feel as high being a part of a love moment for some, I actually probably sometimes feel more high creating a love moment than receiving one. But I think a lot of people, like you said, look at a love moment like that. And they're just like, well, no one's ever loved me that way. Instead of how do I begin creating? And I think it's as simple as, um, if you just start and it takes a lot of risk and vulnerability to try it. Even like, if you just like, I remember if you're just at a birthday party, And you're not the, you didn't throw the birthday party or whatever. And you just try it. You're like, hey, what do you guys think if we all share one thing we like about this person? This is like the simplest form of it to me. People's anxiety goes to the roof. Oh, they do. And the the interesting thing is when people get anxious, it looks different. Sometimes people are like, well, if you're going to make it sentimental, like I get that a lot when I'm trying to create a new culture, you'll get a little bit of like pushback, but then just kind of realizing they it's anxiety or like seeing for what it is. Like I'm not. You know, like emotionally, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. It'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, yeah, good. I'm fine with you not being okay with it. Like, that birthday person's going to walk away feeling more loved. loved. So it's worth you being a little uncomfortable for the, like, love they're going to feel. And then what happens is a lot of people actually want to engage in something like that and have mm-hmm. never learned how to. And so if you are the culture initiated, and you can even be like, I've never done this before, but let's try. Would you guys be willing to try? Like, I know sometimes in a new group, I kind of will just ask, like, would you guys be open to doing like a group question where we could all connect just because um, most people want to love if they have the opportunity? Most people will buy in. And then the other people, the few people who don't want to will get peer pressured into it. (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because they'll go, oh no, another birthday party where they share their feelings about the person. I better figure something out so I don't look stupid sitting there silently with nothing to say. <laughs> totally. Oh, I've definitely been at birthday parties where like the spouse has less like deep things to say yeah, about like, the me, the acquaintance. Yeah, uh-huh. like uh, uh, you better learn how to do this better. Right. So <laughs> this peer pressure will teach you how to love with words. We kind of uh-huh. say because in my business we have like expression because we want to be a culture of feedback. And when someone like there's a new person in it and it's like ah oh, this culture is uncomfortable for them. We have this motto that we turn up the culture mm-hmm. and either they're gonna adapt and yep. like yep yeah, I want to I see the value in this mm-hmm. I buy in or the heat. They're gonna you're turning up the heat essentially yeah. and they'll leave. Yeah. But like it's with friends too. It's like <laughs> yes. we wanna buy in. We don't like if it's not it's the person who's not comfortable, like maybe one in ten, they're probably gonna go find another friend group where they can yeah. coast and they don't have to be vulnerable or like touch into their feelings or never anxious. But then you're gonna attract so many people who like want in. They're like, Oh, you're doing something real and deep. I'm tired of shallow parties where yeah. there's a charcuterie board and we leave totally. and no one like there's no heart no connect connection. at all. Yeah. Yes. Like, cool. That could be Pinterestable, but like, no one engaged their hearts. <laughs> well, and it's an interesting thing because also, I find this for myself. I, if somebody's leading somewhere, it's easy to jump into it, but I naturally don't always want to do something that looks like emotional work. <laughs> Yeah. It's like how I felt with school. I'm like, I don't want to start it. But once I did it, I thought, oh, this isn't as bad as I thought. But so I was thinking about um, what school did you go to? Well, I was homeschooled. Then I went to school for a while. And then oh. I no, I just met school in general. Okay, okay. I so always do you secretly have a master's or something. Yeah, <laughs> I, I secretly do have a master's in trauma. Oh. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, but so I remember at Pizzi, she was going through something really hard. She's my best friend. There, it was like the craziest season of their life where crazy thing after crazy thing after crazy thing was happening. And I was like, what is going on? Like it now it just feels like you're in a cycle of chaos. And so I just like called a bunch of people and was like, you guys get to her house for, we had like 30 minutes that everybody could do it. Get to her house for 30 minutes. I'm going to FaceTime in. We had to FaceTime multiple people in because there's lots of people who love her around, not in her city. And we just prayed for her for 30 minutes. But I was thinking mm. about like, a lot of the people at the meeting were happy to go to her house and pray for 30 minutes and just be like, God, in the cycle of chaos. <laughs> but um, mm. she, but n- I don't know that people individually, when they were hearing her story, would be like, you know what? We should stop and go do this thing. But when there is an invitation, people are much easier to jump into an invitation because it feels like not that much work. Mm-hmm. That's good. And the difference between waiting for the invitation and, and making the invitation. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes people are like, I don't know how to. But you said the idea of trying, like just yes. being really humble, like let's do this together. It's not like you have to be the like way superior expert in it. It's just someone needs a point person. Almost right. like feeling like exactly. the point person feels less intense than the leader. You know, yes. you're like, I'll just organize it. Yeah. I need everyone to figure this out together. But like, I'll take the like, take the hit of being the organizer. Yeah. Um, You did a great event at your house that I loved. Or not at your house, but you did a great event, a garden party with a bunch of women. Oh, yeah, yeah. Will you talk about that? Yeah. Um, it's funny because it's probably like this. I think actually it was interesting. I feel like my realization of the world's waiting to go deeper, but yes. someone needs to do it. It's a little awkward like the to be the initiator, but mm-hmm. it's worth it was probably yes. in high school mm-hmm. when I realized I, this is a funny thing, but I realized like I'd have all these nice thoughts about people. Yeah. And I was like, I should tell them. Yes. Like, what? Why am I not? It's like wasted. The it's like money wasted by. or something yes. like a coupon that expires. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Like, <laughs> just sitting at home. Uh, why should I? But then I when I started doing expires. that, people, especially in high school, because people are awkward, they would be a little intense. And some people would, are not intense, um, uncomfortable. Oh, and then absolutely. instead of them looking uncomfortable, they would make make me feel weird so yeah. they'd be like why are you telling me that or like okay like even if I'm like I love how like your outfit it's really cute and I will need those jeans in my life or something yeah. simple it <laughs> totally. wasn't was not deep like I love how well you do vulnerability <laughs> totally. high school that was not what I was good yeah. I was just uh, like I love her jeans cute. I should tell her I love her yes. jeans I'm gonna tell her and then I tell her and she'd be like okay weirdo or stalker much you know like I got some of that I would say maybe Absolutely. like one in five in high mm-hmm. school for sure but then I realized like later I'm not even kidding so often the person would circle back a month later or whatever and be like like yeah i I realized i really like those jeans or somehow indicate Uh that what i said planted a seed and they were thinking about it and realizing like oh because at first i had been like should i do this like maybe it's not worth it because it doesn't mean anything to these people and then when i realized it does mean something to people it's just like 
I'll take I'll be the fall guy for the awkwardness. Yes. I'm like, that's fine. It's worth it for me. So then I kind of applied that to life. So with mm-hmm. the intentionality with friendship and different things. So um, I was thinking about. Wait, can I jump in really quick? Yeah. One of the things I tell people is you're always going to be awkward when it's new to you, mm. but it gets less awkward in the sense that like when you started giving compliments, it was probably more awkward. like you were like figuring that out but now you nice pants comments. can i get in them i mean i want some i mean i love your butt i mean a thousand percent but like now i would bet it doesn't you don't even think about giving someone a compliment now oh no totally like strangers i'll yeah. be like i love how you interact with your child like i can yeah. tell you're really a connected mom who's thoughtful and then i leave because i yeah. realize it's not gonna settle she's not gonna instantly be like nope thank you i feel loved totally. there's gonna be some awkwardness and i don't to stay for that no i gave her the compliment i can walk away <laughs> <laughs> she'll be thinking about that for a while compliment yes. bomb drop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay so anyways uh fast forward to i was thinking of like oh my gosh how can i facilitate deeper friendship on a mass level yeah. I, it actually really i came back to like i can't be friends with everybody right but how can i teach everybody uh, how can i get everyone to discover the awesome people in our environment Around us. Yeah. so what i did is i had i invited like five friends because i think it is important what we were talking about not everyone's gonna buy in once you start doing this and creating this new culture of depth you'll find the people who are bought in yes. and are willing to go with you and trust like yeah like we'll get there together it might be like we might take missteps as a group but like we're with, worth it yeah or, yeah we're with you and then do that like get your hype people or who people are on board and then you could invite more or get larger yeah. after yes. that you know That's but it's true. like you have the so that you have a you have a stronger yeah support system a stronger culture already cultivated then you grow up bigger and you're like your cult your culture of people is dominating everyone else that comes in it's like the best mlm guys <laughs> <laughs> and they get five people so under true. them who get yeah. five people under them <laughs> and then we have intentionality in the whole city <laughs> but so kind of <laughs> so i did this party where i got five friends so there's six of us total um and i said i want you each we're gonna do like a mixer is what i called it and um i got them each to invite i think like five friends because yeah. i had a bunch of folding tables and i didn't even it wasn't at my house because i didn't have enough room in my backyard so i did it at another friend's house yeah and the idea was that they were the, all the hostesses at their table mm-hmm. and they're we asked everyone to bring a snack to share and they yep. stayed at those tables so i had if you're mentally picturing this like i am six tables in a backyard six women who invited people at the table so there's people i'd never met before at the yeah. party all the things but then i actually went through and created three questions i think yep. per round mm-hmm. and the idea was like i actually did questions that i wanted it to be a little lighthearted. i wanted a little bit of history mm-hmm. and i wanted a little bit of heart so yeah. some of them were sadder some of them were happier whatever but i thought backwards from the emotion i wanted everyone to experience mm, at the table a good way to do it and then i also thought of um this is sound funny but i like have done this enough that i really realize if you just tell people like what's your saddest moment oh no one's gonna get deep yeah no No, like they can't but so for instance um i actually one of the questions was when was the last time you cried i know i literally remember that i was gonna actually say that because i can your party was like three years ago and i I think it was more it was like five years ago yeah i remember that question because it was like it's such a good question because in my table people shared good cries like because they were so happy or because they were so sad or because i mean it like opens people up it totally but it's so much easier to think what's the sad the saddest thing of the year would be such a broad but like cry is so pinnable like you can find your answer quicker and then how deep you go from there you know you get to choose yes exactly so um yeah so i did question i like what was a unique thing about your hometown like i actually now because i've done party i call it the mixer i've done this like Uh uh-huh probably 20 30 times i have a list of questions and yes. my friends have done it so then i just forward it to people so yes. that they can think and we add questions so um anyways everybody started out at the table with a friend they knew because i wanted them to start in comfort yes. and like start vulnerability and do this and then kind of honestly it was a new model we were teaching them something new and then once they we finished that round we did like 30 minutes per yep. round so everybody got to answer and usually answer two questions we got asked them to get up and the hostess stayed at every table but then the other person and we asked everyone else to go sit at a table where they didn't know the and, person yep so then it mixed the idea was yep. literally but then uh, so what happened was after the first round where they you know were kind of with people they ish knew um they created these really awesome connects in 30 minutes 
that they then like I have people who still see those people who wouldn't have but have right. tangible like deep things to go off of because yes. they got like a five minute insight into their soul totally. where if they're doing dumb small talk they like wouldn't you have. never remember you don't even remember if you had that conversation well I was gonna say that that's one of the things that's torturous about going to parties <laughs> oftentimes <laughs> is that there's not anyone facilitating an experience mm -hmm. even yeah. a little one just as much as like hey here's a couple of questions you're gonna hang out with some people and then you're gonna ask them and then all all of a sudden you're like, oh, great. Now I get to have the boring conversations where I have someone who shows up and tells me all about their talk, work talk, and tries talk, to prove talk, how awesome talk. they are or, <laughs> 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 or everyone's pounding drinks in the corner being yeah. like, I gotta get loose enough to figure out how to even have a conversation. But actually the facilitation of that going, oh, this actually lowers the anxiety. Even if it brings it up for a second for some second, people, yeah. it actually lowers the anxiety because they don't feel out of control trying to figure out how to facilitate how the next two hours mm -hmm. of connection point with yeah. people they have no idea. Yeah. You know what's also cool about it is that it kind of levels the playing field for extroverts and introverts yes. Yes. because the extroverts are no longer like it's equal time. Like when we, because we do totally. questions a lot at a lot of our parties, even mm -hmm. if we don't mean to, we end up sure. We, I want to hear group it's, questions also pull a group together. Yeah, rather than sidebar convos. Uh -huh. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. So then it's like not just the extrovert or the loudest or funniest, which I'm guilt not funny. <laughs> guilty of being the funniest. I am the funniest. Uh, I was and I'm the sorry. loudest. I'm amazing all the time. Wow, I accidentally stepped in that one. <laughs> but I meant more like, um, so my husband's quieter, and he might not say if he's not given a window where someone's like, Aaron, what's on your heart? He's right. not going to show up because he's like. I'm not casting pearls before swine. Totally. And I'm like, am I the swine in this analogy? <laughs> He's like, you didn't stop talking. I'm like, oh, that's true. So the idea of the question is that everyone gets to hear because I actually want to hear from everybody. Yes. But so you get your moment and then it moves on to the next person. And yep. then it, I also find like, I don't know what you were saying, like the two hours of small talk or get loose enough to get to the point where the conversation is uh -huh. good. That's what I would end up with. A lot of times it'd be a four hour coffee date that the last hour was really what I wanted. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I was like, let's skip the three hour BS uh -huh. to get to the good this stuff terrible that we all This for, foreplay. Let's just make this happen. <laughs> I have so many sex analogies 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you went there instead of me. So true. Yeah. And, it, and what it did is, I mean, like I was at the event and it was so fun. And there were people that I was like, yeah, I will never connect with you. But then there was people that I was like, oh, this is so fun. And then there were people like, I don't know if I would be friends with you or not, but I enjoyed, it felt like we each got to give something meaningful of who we were. And you had layers of questions. And I think that this is valuable for people to know. Like you had very fun, like menial things. Like what do you love about living in Reading was one of your questions. Yep. And I, I guess I can remember a lot of them. <laughs> um, but it's... Uh, and so we, that's a little bit more surfacey. Like I love the adventure. I love the beauty or I love the, it's interesting, but it gives you some room to wade in. And then you'd have questions like, um, how have you been brave recently or things like that where it, then it, it doesn't always have something. I, it doesn't have to be questions that make you vulnerable because you're being negative. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people think like vulnerability happens because you share like a fear or a or a pain or a wound, but you can have as much vulnerability talking about a dream or something that is meaningful to you or something that you love about something uh, because that's connection. And so I think what I'm trying to do is help broaden people's in this podcast is to help broaden people's idea of what connection is and that you can learn to intentionally create connection in whatever circumstances you're in. I want to I want to add this. I think that a lot of group gatherings come with uh, shallow conversations about politics and then people get fired up about that <laughs> as, as one avenue, which that's not bad to talk about politics. Maybe it reveals something about ourselves or we go into cattiness where there's a lot of talk about other people because when we can't be present with ourselves and our own stories and we're too scared to come out of them, we start sharing other people's stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get into experiences of gossip where it becomes this real dark environment very easily for a lot that's not us in our culture but it is for a lot of people's culture they're just like oh did you hear about so and so da, 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 because you're too terrified to get present and share vulnerably here's something going on in my life because you're also too scared of the idea that the people across from me don't care and they might not you might have created a world where people really don't care what's going on inside of you and so what we're even talking about today in this intentionality conversation is creating environments where people do love and care about you and you don't have to talk 
talk about other people to bond. You can actually talk about your own life and explore the goodness of it and the hardships mm-hmm. of it and all of that. And it can be fostered at a very simple level. Like you said, strangers, I start with strangers and we expose them to this experience and then begin to build from there. I do want to add this though on my end, if you don't mind, I I know that men out here might be listening to this and being like, uh, that's okay. a girl thing. That's such a lady <laughs> thing. <laughs> I will never do that. Why in the hell would I ever do that? Totally. That would not be, hey, how's your feelings? Man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to initiate that. I'm going to be thrown out. Here's I'm at a football game. <laughs> but I will say this. I work with a lot of men clients who all want to have this. They do. They want connection. They want to be known. They want to be seen. And then they're just like, but we're men, so we can't. Yeah. I recently had a feedback from one of my friends that was really good feedback. He was like, something that I really love about you is that you can just be out of control, funny, playful, playful, very surface level and engaging in a good like that manly, like we're all going to play away. And then all of a sudden you can turn on a dime and see a moment that's necessary and bring yourself fully present into something serious and begin to engage someone's heart. And then all of a sudden, um, those of us around you are having an experience that we didn't know was possible. And I, I facilitated that myself because I want to talk about the bit real quick, the bigger group of men, um, a couple, I don't know, last summer, probably, I think it was maybe yeah. last summer I decided like, Oh, I need to randomly have a men's event with men who don't know each other, but yeah. all guys that I know of. And they're I think all, my husband was there. Uh-huh, right? <laughs> and they're all good hearted dudes. Yeah. And I sat down with my friend Marcus and we're like, what can we do to make this a memorable event? Which, by the way, I think is something you've both mentioned. I normally just if you have one person like when PC planned the healing party for me, it was her and my precious friend, Brittany. They decided together and a lot of the fun things I've done if you have one person Mm -hmm. that you do it with you don't feel alone also if it fails you don't feel alone and it failing (laughs) like oh (laughs) that bomb together I thought that was a good idea but man we're in the same shame boat sinking (laughs) together now (laughs) like when you got your five like hype crew together like you're not doing it all on your own I think that takes some of the pressure off Mm -hmm. go ahead so we sat down and and that that again that's part of the bonding process as well mm-hmm. even just picking the planning like, the planning that's part true. yes instead of being like oh i have to plan this thing it feels exhausting it's like no this is going to be so cool i'm going to sit down with two or three of my best guy friends speaking yeah. to guys specifically and we're going to create something that feels epic and deep and it's going to be messy i don't know let's figure out what to do and for us we sat down and came up with this day of events where we went and chopped down a bunch of logs in a forestry area that like <laughs> I apparently was illegal, but they were dead. They were dead <laughs> they trees. Were dead. Well, I was caught by a, a, a forestry guy and he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm cutting logs. So that <laughs> he's like, yeah, clearly you are. I'm like dead logs. And we're, we're going to build rafts. We're going to have two groups of guys. And we're going to have to build rafts to get to that Island over there. And he was like, this is really illegal. But I'll let it happen because it sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> they even appreciate it. Because yes. I started selling him on this experience. Like, and I listen, was like, we're going to do this man day. Uh-huh. And you have to figure out how to get all the, like food. We had food and the stuff to cook the food. And each team had a piece of that. And they have to get it all the way over to this island. And there's just this messy craziness all along the way as people are kind of fighting a little bit and then bonding because they're having to like figure out how to use their manpower to <laughs> <laughs> create yeah. these crappy rafts and survive all the way to this island. Survive. And <laughs> But at the end of it, we're on this island. We've just now had an. And you ex- shot guns to begin the day. Yeah, we started. I, I did that. I started yeah. off the day with sh- shooting my uh, AR-15 and everyone having fun with that. But it was this progressive event until we're on this island, and now we've had a little bit of trauma and a, a little bit of brain power exercise trying to figure out how to solve stuff. And we're sitting around with hot dogs and hamburgers in our hands, uh, the fresh smell of barbecue, and I'm like, "All right, guys." I got two questions that everyone has to answer and we're going to start here with this and asked about what's one of your, I think I said, um, what's your, um, 
the thing that you feel like your your biggest challenge that you're facing in this current season right now that you're overcoming and then what's something that you're really hopeful about for this next mm-hmm. year and it was really simple but i watched like we had guys breaking down in tears yeah. on that island going oh my gosh i just realized when you said this how hard this was for me and these are mm-hmm. all guys that were mixed a couple knew a couple but all of a sudden 20 some guys are crying yeah. and they're crying for other guys yeah like mm-hmm. i watched all of a sudden one guy break down crying about his life and then i saw a couple guys tearing up and they're like dude let me tell you about that i was th- i went through that too and i totally get it and he's got tears in his eyes and that was all facilitated with fun adventure it wasn't that hard and i walked away going this was something that was memorable for me and every guy who was part of it yeah and so the the basis is quit being a pansy if you're a man. If you want a culture like this, create it. Yeah. yeah. And it could be as simple as like we had dinner the other night and we just with a group of five of us. And I think the question was just like, what is one thing that's hard that you're going through? And what is one thing that you feel really excited about? Like just simple things. But we had everyone answer. There's only five people at dinner. But then we got vulnerable. Yeah. And, and, and one of our friends who wouldn't normally go to this space turned into a ball of tears. Yes. And then we all cried. And then, I mean, and then after that, all of us cried sharing. And it's not like you, we have to do that every single time we hang out. But there is this thing that we all were like, oh, this is the deeper connection that we're all wanting. Everybody yeah. wants to be known, to be loved, and life can get busy. Or you can get in a rut of how you hang out. Where it's like yeah. you just do yeah, the just same do Netflix things every time. Just, you make the yeah. same jokes about the same things. Yeah. And then you end up on YouTube trail, like a buddy trail. And you're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a friend that's like, oh, let me show you this video. <laughs> yes, totally. So it just if you just engage a little bit of intentionality, I feel like you can take. And I do that. I mean, it, like I, it could just be a group dinner yeah. where a bunch of people are out and you don't want it to be like huge because it's really hard to hear like 12 people at a restaurant. But like if you have like six people, you could just ask a question that pulls people in to sharing something that's meaningful. And you'd be surprised at how much people end up loving getting to experience something that's real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that I love for you, Abby, that you were talking about is how your friends put on a hope party for you. Uh And there was the intentionality in knowing your world. And a lot of yeah. times we are so disconnected from each other that we're not aware of the people inside of our community, what's really happening in mm-hmm. their space. So we don't even have the capacity to dream for creating an intentional moment because we're not intentional about already knowing the people around us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so part of this is an invitation in this conversation to get present with yourself and get present with your community. Like, what are my friends going through? What is their life like? And if I don't know what their life is like and what they're going through, that's a huge red flag right there. Just to begin with that. Do I even know my closest four or five friends, what their lives are like as parents, as individuals going through college, whatever it is. And then being able to go from there and go, all right, what are their needs? Because oftentimes we're not considering empathetically stepping into others worlds. Like, what is that like for them? What do they need to feel celebrated? Oh, their birthday's coming up. Oh, they just um, started a new job. How can we deliberately get involved in getting inspired with them as they're taking these next steps? We're basically saying quit being passive. Exactly. Quit being passive in your life and create a culture of love and vulnerability if you want to. I realize. Even if you don't. It's kind of interesting because like you want to be known, but really like the first step is knowing who's like you're saying sitting next to you. And it's like. A lot of times I just, it's the best, sorry, my husband always laughs. He's like, you ask the best questions. And I'm sure you get this too. Mm -hmm. Where like, I naturally do come up with good, because you have to engage, again, too broad, turns into small talk, but I want to know the person next to me, even if it's like a total stranger. So I just, Aaron's like, how do you even know what to ask? Usually I start by more general ones that everyone would think of. And then when I hear something that's interesting or Mm -hmm. different, I like stop and dig in. Mm -hmm. And then, because when you get someone else, it's like, talking about themselves it, it really changed and they're like oh you care yes. now I care about you too and it does usually start it's not usually you answering your own question or giving a monologue about what's going on in your own life I honestly think most of the time it needs to start by people knowing that you care and then yes. they care to know you too like it is this yes. kind of this thing and um yeah 
I can't tell you me... how many situations that sorry I can't tell you how many situations I've been in where no one will ask a question and you're having to hold or like maybe you'll ask, I'll ask question to people and then they'll answer a ton and then they'll just stare <laughs> And I'm like, are you not going to ask me any question? <laughs> and I know that historically I felt really unloved. Yeah. But I'm like, you don't even know me. I just spent two hours with you and you didn't ask me one flipping question. I think that's time. actually so common. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. It's, it's super why, common. Which is why we're talking about yeah. this yeah. on the podcast. The easiest way to get vulnerability and, and meaningful connection and heartfelt connection is questions. Yeah. Because when people feel like you care and there's space... Like a lot of people, you want vulnerability. You don't have to create some kind of crazy thing. If you just start asking, like, I care about you things. Yeah. People want to go there. What you what you end up have happening is that as you start doing that, then you start learning the special details that then lear- lead to the intentionality moments. Like we had a, a, a couple of friends who they were in a job transition season. And because we were present with their life and knowing enough about it, we knew like, oh, this could be a really difficult season for them. And so we rallied a group of people oh, yeah. together. This is something we did with um, Jenna. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Way that. back in the day. They took a, can I jump in? Yeah, you can go ahead and kind of share. So I, a friends of ours took a job that we all knew was good, but was a pay decrease. Like a third of what they're making. Yes. and But like we knew long term it was a good decision. And also like heart wise, it was very kind of them to give their life to what they were doing. And so I think we all for three months, we all put just a, a little bit of money aside. And I think we got like maybe eight people yeah. involved yeah. in it um, where we were like, OK, what what can we give? And some people could get whatever that people could get. It was really at a time in life for all of us. I think that it was, Everybody finances was broke. were not easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. None of us were oh, rich. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but we all thought like, oh, what what could we give? Uh-huh. And so we saved up for three months. Do you remember? I thought we gave them to every month because we knew they needed it every month. Was that not it? No, because do you remember oh. we had the party where we gave it all to oh, them at once? Oh, I forgot. Yep. Yeah. So then we created a party. Jenna, this was funny. We created a party and everybody had to bring some kind of clue about where their money was going to be hidden. And so I totally forgot. We, oh my gosh, yes. we invited them over. They didn't know what was happening. We just said, oh, come on over. We're having like a cocktail party or something. <laughs> and so they came over and then we were like, we have a game for you guys to play. And so what we had done is we had hidden money all throughout the house and there were clues everywhere and jenna brought a diaper with a melted kit kat in it <laughs> yeah i forgot or yep. that's my humor poop humor. <laughs> poop humor that was amazing so i, th- I think they that. like found that and then they had to go to the toilet and in the toilet was a bag of money oh that's and right the upper, t- upper part upper oh my gosh tank. yes yeah. it's all coming back <laughs> Which is like so fun. So we just we we told them there was a scavenger hunt. They had to rush through it, but they didn't know what the scavenger hunt was for. And then they found clue after clue with money after money after money. And again, one person giving like 50 bucks feels very kind, but is much less meaningful than just feeling like a group of people together thought about you and wanted to engage in in loving you and caring for you. And it's kind of like your hope party where it's like they've been there for the process. Mm-hmm. So we are all in the conversations leading up to quitting. Yep. Is this a good job? And it was like a sign of like, yeah, just like we know what's going on in your life. We're here. We support you. Rally. It's so much more than the money, mm-hmm. you know? Can- it's interesting because so I've done that for another like you there's have- been other times yeah, of like, us. yeah, um, but I, what I was going to say more than the other times that I've done it is that I think um, there's this tension of like not wanting to toot your own horn of like, oh, could you have done it anonymously? And there's been times sure. where I've thought about it or not, not said something when we've given to it. Totally. And I realize like it totally is a heart motive. But when you take the opportunity to be like, hey, this is why it's almost like we partnered with Jesus and like yes. we feel like. Th- we tell them why we felt this was important not yeah. like we're awesome or whatever you almost no. miss an opportunity for like an ex- for the lord to like show up and make it significant mm-hmm. like this wasn't our idea mm-hmm. like we feel like the lord is giving you a green Absolutely. light we support this and we want to show you we support it yes. not like hey tell us we're awesome we gave you oh, money totally. because there is this tension of you should have done it anonymous or not said anything but the significance and the mm-hmm. impact like would have really been lost if yes. we just like left an envelope on their doorstep right right because it 
they walk away being like, oh my gosh, that was so nice of people, I guess. But when you create a, something like that, they go, oh, our f- community is it's truly bought into this. Yeah. They have been along with the story and they'll continue to be on our story with us because they've they've displayed it and expressed it. Well, and you, no one else had to know. Like, I don't think anyone no, outside of our no, group knew. No. So there is this tension of like, oh yeah, no. Will you tell the story of Lauren's baby shower and what you did there that made it and f- would you also talk about the balance of fun and heartfelt and how you do that and yeah things yeah it's funny because i mean they like i don't want anyone to walk away here you have to have it takes a lot of effort and then you do the questions at the right, end totally. like truly it's like birthday coffee dates having people over hanging out on the soccer field i lo- usually just think i want this to go deeper yes. what do i know about their life i also realized too one of it is um if i don't know what to ask because it's someone i don't have a ton of relationship with like how do i get it deeper uh-huh. i'll go for a feeling so if they tell me mm-hmm. something like oh yeah like work's been stressful and you know i'm not home as much i'll actually be like how does that feel like is that hard for mayor think it's potentially because feelings is usually usually less of open-ended right and it, i realized too a lot of times people are processing in the moment because we live such fast-paced lives that it's like creating a moment for process and a lot sometimes people are like i don't know my answer i'm like i don't know like you thought of the question you probably knew your answer i'm like oh no i have i thought about one i want to hear about your life right i did not think about what my answer for the Absolutely. question is but it is this moment of take a second sometimes it's i don't know about you guys but like there is a moment of like probably a minute or two where sometimes people don't answer right away yeah because people are thinking about their answer yes but it's like creating the space of like we care enough to process so we want to hear your process like take a moment in our fast-paced life to think about your feelings and implications and this season and whatever so yes um so for my friend oh who had dealt with infertility we all had been with her on the journey for like seven plus years and it was her baby shower and it was going to be beautiful and pretty and delicious food but like so often i walk away from those parties feeling like so empty i'm like cool we ate great food it looked pretty we looked pretty there totally (laughs) great photos yes but there was no i like i kind of feel like i don't know like a one night stand i feel empty and shallow (laughs) i'm like i feel like used for my you know being at the event but i didn't connect at all right so from this friend and it was such an important baby shower that i really was like i don't want to feel that way like how can we but like we don't need to do words of affirmation like that's too general so i like i said i thought backwards from like what do i like we've all been with her the reason we're so excited about this baby is because we've been with her on the seven year infertility journal journey how do we celebrate that and make a moment Mm -hmm. of that so i asked i think ever like we got a few people because again we didn't want it to be five hours long right and all of our friends are so good at this at this point totally there would be five hours later yes so i asked like three or four people i don't i don't know if i give advance notice uh, but maybe i just tapped on them on the baby shower i was like hey would you mind telling what you've admired and what you've watched Lauren do well walking out the, the waiting. And yeah, I love that you, was, you you reduced it to three or four people. Yeah. Like you're like, oh no, this would be too much to go through it. So I'm going to deliberately grab just a handful and have them express this. Going. Exactly. Like it, yeah. it's enough to get the feeling Lauren to feel loved, mm-hmm. but it's not about everybody getting the mic all the time. Yes. You know, it really was about Lauren and us feeling like it was almost like sometimes it feels like sacred moments. And you know how like in the Old Testament, they'd build like monuments to yes. remember what the Lord has done. Uh-huh. That's what I feel like we miss sometimes yes. when we have these parties. Ooh, I feel the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I feel like there's like we I want to emotionally connect because I want to like mm-hmm. recognize and admire what the Lord has done in this yes. season. And if we do it together, it's like a holy moment. kind yes. of thing. And that's what it felt like at her baby shower. So inside. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I think that's really the heart of why I wanted to do this podcast is exactly what you're saying, that we can miss if we're not intentionally engaging, we can miss special moments of celebrating something incredible that has happened or that has been done. Um, so you asked the question of, um, what has it been like watching her go through this and what did the feeling, what did it feel like after, like, how did that go? Oh gosh. I think we all were crying pretty much the whole time. And I didn't expect that, but I mean, I guess I should have now on the flip side, but, um, it felt like we all, it almost felt like we were linked arms Mm -hmm. surrounding her. We did pray, but it almost felt like the sharing was Was as powerful and healing and like, marking the time as the prayer was Mm -hmm. if it makes sense so yeah it felt really bonding and like recognizing and looking back it was like the end of a chapter Mm -hmm. um she's now like like has finished that we've stood with you and we're sending you into this new one and we're like being intentional about it so yeah it kind of felt like old testament style (laughs) i think that there's something so beautiful about picking celebrating things that you've overcome 
I think that most people forget to do that. Like when a good, when a season changes and now things are better, you just are like, oh, thank God it's better. Instead of literally celebrating what you walked through yeah. and how far you've come. And I think that is part of gratitude mm. and um, worship even like towards God in like being with your people getting to reminisce. And I think a lot of people miss the moments of reminiscing like on birthdays. Sometimes I won't say like, what do you love about? I'll be like, what, how are you different now than you were last year? Or what are we, what are things we saw you grow in this year that is, um, that we admire that happened this year? Or, um, there's just so much about like marking, our journeys, what the hard parts of what they are. Like that's, I think why I love the healing party. Cause they are like, they are acknowledging a pain part of my life mm. and then marking the good parts of our life. Like at, you know, weddings are like a good part of our life, but we have so many celebrations and milestones on the way of life that it'd be sad if we only get to like enjoy our wedding and our funeral as we don't get to enjoy the funeral. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, um, I had a joke there and then yeah. I went past the joke. But, <laughs> you will laugh in sympathy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Just Yeah. that. laughs> oh. funny. He's so funny. Um, observations. Uh, when we get to know more people, know people, we're able to make observations about their life. And one of the things that's been really helpful for me, like we'll just say even in our marriage is that He's uh, pointing to Abby. <laughs> <laughs> Not ours, Jenna. No yeah, sister yeah. wives here. Yeah. No sister wives here. <laughs> But in our relationship, you know, every three, six months, a year, where you you have observations or reflections on the journey of my life in those times where you're able to go, oh my gosh, Justin, you know something I have noticed is how you've done dot, dot, dot. And that reflective feedback or those mm -hmm. observations end up helping me get a better grasp on the reality of my life and the goodness, the changes, the growth, the development. And I think that when we cultivate intentionality inside of communities like this, then you have these moments of powerful impact where we as a, as a group of people are able to sit down and reflect to each other. Here's how I've seen you grow in the last eight years or the last five years. Here's who you become. Here's what I admire about you. And so we're, we're talking about questions, but then the observations come in as well. And people walk away. And we're talking, I like when you're talking about the monuments that historically were in the Bible and leaving these monuments in our lives. We're like, oh my gosh, we had such a great night. I sat down with five friends and they just out of nowhere decided to start telling me how they've seen me grow or develop mm -hmm. or what I've done well at life. And they're plugged in enough to know that about me mm -hmm. and to see that. And I'm not even aware of that in my life. And there's something that rises up inside of us as individuals where all of a sudden we go, oh, my life is actually really good. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, because my friends could see the hope, the goodness inside of my life. And I, the reason I point that out is that a lot of people don't see the goodness inside of their lives. They're not they're they're caught in the moments of their trauma, their tragedies, their hardships. They're not even aware of the goodness, but when you have community that's tracking with you inside of your journey, they're able to intentionally, we can intentionally show up and reflect the goodness and inspire hope and inspire possibilities and all of that. So I'm going to give like a couple of practical examples. If you have a friend who's in a hard season, you can literally do a, a night to like just love on them in that hard season and just think of a couple ways. Oh, we could tell them things we love about them or we could all bring their favorite candy bar or we could all like you could do something very simple like that. If you have a friend that's going through a hard season, you could talk through all the things you're proud of them for how they're handling the hard yeah. season for the things that you think they're doing well. If you have a friend who made it out of a hard season, you can celebrate that. If you have a friend who's doing something, I mean, like book launches, I think it's so important to be able to celebrate when people accomplish something that that took them work to do. So um, being aware of even like as small of celebrating like after somebody's given birth, like remembering like, oh, look at they just did like this huge thing that is incredible. We're all excited about the baby, but also it's like a beautiful thing that they just did. The, the concept is how are we, I remember um, one of the nights I thought was so special is after our friends Doug and Katrina had um, their baby, we had a night celebrating, was it, it was afterwards, right? 
I don't remember this story. <laughs> <laughs> they made us like this really nice dinner and they just talked about the journey of like being pregnant and then the birth process. And they had mm. the people that were at the hospital at the dinner and then they all got to share like what it felt like to be at the hospital and what it felt like. Sometimes just recap events are very special. Yeah. Like they all just kind of shared about the emotional experience because when you can share out loud an emotional experience. So Justin shared what it was like to yeah. see this, this birth. And then, um, Justine shared what it was like from her side and Doug shared what it was like from his side. And so they all just kind of got to share the beautiful yeah. thing and got to celebrate Katrina, but then also got to partake in, Oh, we just all experienced a miracle. And now we're just reminiscing like the power of sentimentality and reminiscing. is just such a, a powerful, bonding agent and I think it's so important so I just my heart is if you're listening so many people are scared to do this stuff yeah so what we're, if, we're scared of being rejected mm -hmm. we're scared of awkwardness like Jenna mm -hmm. said I just wanted to add that um, and giving it giving the, one of the things that I want to say is we have to learn how to give permission to those things so I've learned how to give permission to awkwardness yeah I get I, I, I give this moment permission to be awkward. Internally, I'm saying yeah. that to myself. I give myself permission to be in awkward moments or I give myself permission to be rejected by people when I get vulnerable and try these things and it's not high stakes. And also I think about learning, like you've got to try a hundred times. So you might try at multiple parties and you might realize, oh, actually I, everybody was in the middle of laughing and joking that wasn't the right time to yeah. ask a deep uh -huh. question like there's there I is was so abrasive and i just tried to turn the shit answer the question that wasn't the question i'm sorry you're crying <laughs> <laughs> you didn't answer the question <laughs> yeah and so like there are things to learn but if you give yourself grace like i can try this 20 times and i can fail 20 times and then i'll figure it out and i'll get good at it because i can learn from that um, and then the idea of like, if I'm going to be rejected for something, I'd want it to be for love and celebration. Yeah, oh, that's good. If I'm going to get rejected, I don't want it to be, I don't want to live my life where I'm scared. And so I'm going to steal love from somebody because I'm scared mm. or where I, um, I don't want to be uncomfortable. And so I'm going to miss out on creating a moment where people could actually feel uplifted or encouraged or taken care of because I want to be comfortable. Like, I just think I can't afford to live that way. I feel like loving people is one of the reasons we're all on the planet to learn the lessons of love. And if you, if you stay afraid and uncomfortable, and I have a lot of people, they don't want to look weak and intentionally pursuing people feels weak or having a desire for connection feels weak. And I'm like, yeah, this is vulnerability. It's going to be vulnerable to try new ways of connecting with people. However, vulnerability is what leads to intimacy. And it may not work every time, but love takes risk. Love does take risk. <laughs> like, I was like on a wind up, but then that was what I Whoa. ended up. I wanted to say something risk. about the rejection yeah, thing too. Do. It's funny because like, Sometimes people are like, oh, like you've never been rejected or whatever. I'm like, oh, totally. There are people who have invited to things or throughout the, who still live here yeah. who have rejected, like not wanted to buy in. Totally. But my rejected your advances. <laughs> yes, no, kind of. <laughs> I rejected my friendship. Yeah. But it's, it's so funny. It reminds me of like what a mom says on a sitcom. Like it doesn't where like they are actually missing out. Because right. they don't see like they don't see a value in what I'm doing. Like it's not worth it. That party doesn't sound fun from that equals value. Like it's not valuable enough to give their time to. But just because they don't see the value doesn't mean it's unvaluable. And I think yeah. people yeah. throw the bath out with the bath, you know, like, oh, like they don't want to be your friend. So i I'm not worth being friends. Like, no, that person wasn't a, a fit, maybe. Totally. Most of the time I think it's their stuff, not my stuff. <laughs> but there's like <laughs> other people. Doesn't mean like, oh, shut down entirely. Like you're yeah. gonna get a little bit of rejection, but just because they see don't see the value, it doesn't mean it's not valuable. And I'd say a lot of groups where I've started this, that it wasn't the culture after I do it a couple of times, people buy in and they start liking it. It's yeah. just, it's a culture clash in the beginning. Yeah. So the first time that we say like, Hey, let's all share something we love about this person. I remember my friend went home for her um, birthday and she was like, at a family event. And she's like, could you all say one thing you like about me for my birthday? And her family was like, that's the most arrogant thing I've ever heard of. Oh yeah, or, hardcore shut down. Or like, what would you want me to, I mean like just complete. And so I know it's not culturally normal to a lot of families. Yeah. What I have seen, and this is what leadership is, is I bring a culture, who cares if you like it or not? I'd rather have a culture of love. I'd rather enjoy my family. I'd rather have family time that feels connected. 
And if after 10 times of doing it, they just have like, yeah, this is just who Abby's going to be. And then people always end up finding they like love and connection. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, even the hard ones. And so the people that, you know, like can't just be like, don't come anymore, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> like, but oftentimes parents will get one over, siblings will get one over it. And not if you forcefully demand that they do, but if you continue to create culture and, and the people that it's not used to, like if I am loving somebody, let's say we're throwing a party in order to love someone specifically. Um, I, like you did a meal train for somebody one of my friends had babies and then six months later their daughter broke their knee so we're like oh man you need help in a very Again. practical way yeah but like if someone outside of the culture wasn't there and they were like why are you doing this it's not that you should stop doing it it's yeah. that that having that as a dominant culture gets to bring people into yeah. a new way of loving Agreed. Yeah. So with that said, I just want to say, Jenna, thank you so much for coming on here again. It was my pleasure. It was so fun. I love talking to you. Guys. Yeah. You're and funny. You're fun. You you're are engaging. funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I you're like sassy. that. You're sassy. Thanks. And you're so good at, again, creating fun and meaning. And how can people get a hold of you again? Uh, probably the best way would be to follow us on Instagram at Turbans for Tots. So T U R B A N S for f-o-r-t-o-t-s yes i would like to say that justin and abby abby spelled a-b-i dot com <laughs> 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 i was like abby. i didn't spell her name this time <laughs> well, no. yeah. uh, it's so good also I, I have homework for people yeah give them homework when you're listening i think you should find one way to create a meaningful moment either create a dinner party and have a question uh or create a think about a friend who's a friend we could throw a party for what is something we could celebrate or encourage somebody in? Like, don't just listen to this and be like, oh, that's nice. They have nice ideas. Like, do something. Yeah, absolutely. Get off your butt and do something. Do it. Just do it. So if you got anything out of this podcast, remember to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Share it on Instagram. Share about it. Tell people. Y'all got to be intentional. Time. Listen to this podcast now. <laughs> All these people who want their friends to be better friends. Like, <laughs> I'm going to post this. I'm going to send this to my mom. <laughs> Here's the thing. It, that's why I love our podcast because I'm like, if you want to instigate something in your friendship group or your yeah. family group, you can actually just ask them to listen to the podcast and then talk about it. Yeah. And it's an icebreaker where then you don't have to build that into the culture. We naturally mm -hmm. just did it for you. You're welcome. The You're welcome. The, <laughs> the tip of the spear. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody. Right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.